In today's episode, two brothers set out to go hunting for pigs and collect shedded antlers on an overnight hunting trip. Unbeknownst to the two boys, a hungry mountain lion stalks their camp so it can eat the scraps of their hunt, causing it to brutally attack the two boys. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the deadly mountain lion attack on Talon and Wyatt Brooks. Welcome to Final Affliction. Talon and Wyatt Brooks knew the woods of Georgetown like the back of their hand. The brothers had been hunting here with their fathers since they could remember. Before either of them were allowed to lift a rifle, Mr. Brooks made sure that they could track, skin, and process every single inch of the animal that they were after. Only when they were 15 did they first get to shoot down a buck. The Brooks boys learned from the best, and they lived for the wilderness. Even outside of hunting season, they'd still go camping. Talon, now 21, had a packed schedule with college classes and keeping a part-time job. But on the rare occasion that he could get a weekend off, he'd stop by his childhood home to pick up his 18-year-old brother and their father for some time outside. On the 23rd of March, 2024, Mr. Brooks was held up at work, but Talon had a lucky break. He wouldn't have to go into work for the night shift, but Talon and Wyatt didn't mind. It would have been nicer to have their father with them, but they could get along without him just fine. It wouldn't be the first time they headed off on their own, after all. While the snow was still on the ground, the only thing available to hunt was the wild boars. If all went well, the boys would bring back one or two boars home to process, filling the freezers nicely until spring came and the bigger bucks were open for hunting again. But mostly they were there for the shed antlers that were all over the place at that time of the year. They arrived at one of their favorite camping spots, hidden just off the road in the woods. They spent the first hour chatting merrily as they set up camp, got everything ready for that night's fire, and set up dinner. They were planning on going back home the very next day, so the fire was more for warmth than cooking purposes. They had plenty of food for two strapping young men packed for them by their mother that morning. Since the afternoon was still young, they decided to head out to see if they could get one or two pigs before nightfall. And sure enough, they got a fantastic boar within two hours. They even managed to find three good-sized antlers, too. The rest of the afternoon was spent dressing the pig out in the field and carrying it back to their campsite. They left the entrails out for the scavengers to clear up for them. Wyatt was the one who brought the boar down, something he wasn't going to let his older brother live down anytime soon. They cleaned up in a nearby stream and headed off to bed for the night. While they slept, the guts and hooves that they left behind for the scavengers attracted its fair share of critters. Among the voles and a lone coyote, there was also a mountain lion. She chased the rest away from what little was left but the scraps were barely enough to fill her belly. The predator tracked the scent of the pig all the way back to the campsite where the boys slept, but she kept her distance. The smell of the carcass was tantalizing, but within that delicious smell was also the odor of fire and humans. She nearly built up enough courage to go up to the camp, but just then Wyatt stepped out of the tent to relieve himself. She slunk back into the woods and decided to wait until the men made a move in the morning. If they left, then she could get close enough to make away with a piece or a whole carcass. The night dragged on, but sure enough, the morning dawned and the boys were outside as soon as the sun came up. The watcher retreated a little farther back, never taking her eyes off them. She'd taken shelter right up against a boulder where a thicket of brushes grew high enough to shield her from sight. When they'd finished a quick breakfast, checked on the carcass and made sure that their rifles were in working order, the boys headed out again. But the cat didn't bank on them heading off straight into the woods toward her. She knew that the humans usually kept to the pathways, but now, with Wyatt in the lead, they were making a beeline toward her hiding place. The men were fast approaching, and the nervous cat let out a low growl. At first, Wyatt thought it was a truck passing by. They were close enough to the road that it would be possible. He simply kept walking, 
not thinking anything of it. He came just five feet from the cat's hiding spot before he even saw her. But by then, it was too late. Mad with fear, hunger, and unwilling to be cornered by anyone or anything, she leapt out of the bushes before Wyatt could even take up his rifle. Her claws were unsheathed, and she pounced with deadly accuracy. If it weren't for Wyatt's heavy winter jacket, her claws would have ripped his chest to shreds. The same couldn't be said for his uncovered face. The animal sank her teeth into the soft tissue of his cheek, knocking him over with the force of her full weight flying into him. Talon managed to get the chance to raise his firearm, but his little brother and his attacker were intertwined with each other that he would have shot Wyatt if he attempted it. Instead, Talon did the only thing he could do. He threw down his gun and launched himself at the screaming chaos of writhing limbs and blood. Talon tackled the beast like he would have hit an opponent on the football field. This time, the mountain lion was the one being catapulted through the air. In midair, before they even hit the forest floor, Talon yelled at his brother to run. Wyatt, holding the flap that used to be his cheek to his face, ran through the woods half-blind. He didn't know it yet, but his left eye was somewhere beneath his crushed cheekbone. With Talon's screams and the cat's wild cries behind him, Wyatt reached the camp in minutes. He grabbed the nearest phone from the tent and with his bloody fingers slipping on the screen, he managed to dial 911. Wyatt didn't remember it later, but he did manage to relay to the operator what was going on and what their location was. But then, with the woman still on the line, he passed out cold, finally giving in to the shock, pain, and fear that just overloaded his system. That's where emergency services found him lying at the door of their little two-man tent. Wyatt didn't regain consciousness as he was driven away in the ambulance. The team that stayed behind didn't have to search long to find Talon. Just a few meters away from the camp, they found him, unmoving on the ground, with a cougar standing over him. The officer's shots rang through the air, and she bolted back into the trees. They were not aiming for the cat. Like Talon, they didn't want to risk shooting the man instead of the cat. But it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Talon's throat had been ripped out, and his entire upper body was so destroyed that it was evident that she'd started eating at his soft tissues before they'd even arrived. The trackers found her before the day was out. The cat was euthanized, and her necropsy was done mostly to satisfy the necessary paperwork. When they found her, Talon and Wyatt's blood was still wet on her muzzle. There's no question that they got the right cat. Wyatt is still looking at more surgeries than any boy should have to face in their lifetime. He's stable and expected to make a full recovery. The entire left side of his face will have to be reconstructed, and there's no word out yet on whether or not they'll be able to save his eye. And, unfortunately, he'll be confined to the hospital for the next few weeks, so he won't be able to attend his one and only brother's funeral. Talon sacrificed his life to save his brother's, but tragically, it resulted in his terrifying final affliction.